Okay, and we're back and with Supervisor Ted Navelli and Ted. Uh, what what about the, the fire and stuff like that? Why don't we talk a little bit about that? I mean, okay. obviously, uh, we've got the gravity supply line, and the gravity supply line is is that is supposed to add. Uh, is it, I would imagine it might be some capacity, but it's also pressures for uh, fighting fire up in the upcountry? Yes, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Tom, because on that gravity supply line, we are going to have hydrants in strategic places where our fire trucks and our fire apparatuses will be able to go there and take water off of that gravity supply line and a great amount of water and fill up those tenders and those uh, fire apparatuses and get them onto the fire. Okay, so basically, essentially, like, you know, for people who live in the upcountry, it's uh, a little bit different. I'm lucky. I have a, a fire hydrant that's down by our driveway going up because when uh, when uh, Blackman had put in uh, his development, Jackson Pines, I believe, mm -hmm. they had to get water, so they uh, got some water from the, uh, from uh, amateur water agency and so they have that stored but getting to there there's there was a pipe and so the pipe they had put some hydrants on it mm -hmm. so we it's pretty lucky but normally you know like in the city I guess that's what is that what happens basically they come on out and the firemen uh, hook up their hoses to that to that hydrant and uh, and fight the fire with that you know like in the cities or maybe their trucks their engines but basically in the upcountry the engines they just use those to fill up and then uh, go back to the scene of the fire. Is that what usually happens, Ted? Well, I'm not a firefighter, okay, but, all but, right. but, but I'll, I, I could say this. The water that's coming out of that fire hydrant by your house, because I know where you live, right. that water comes from up country. Right. That water comes from the, comes from the right. buckhorn treatment sure. plant and comes down the yeah, hill. It comes into a pine. See, if, if you're on a well, a lot of that stuff... And you're in your own thing. A lot of that stuff, I understand, I hear about it, you know, but it doesn't affect me. And things that usually don't affect you, you don't know that much about. Right. But I do know that water comes from the upcountry and, uh, yeah. and, you know, is there. So getting back to your question, let me try to answer your question. So if it's a water tender, I take it that they'd fill up the water tender and then take the water to the fire, okay? Right. If, it, if it's a fire engine... Um, a fire apparatus, depending on whether it's a pumper, uh, pumper and a and a storage capacity on that engine, they would disperse that to wherever they need it. Um, so, okay. So, about how many fire hydrants are going to be going in up country or the off the cop system? Yeah, off the cop system. I believe there's going to be four, and uh, those four were looked at by uh, uh, Battalion Chief Bellarive, uh, Battalion Chief Ray Blankenheim. Um, Director Rich Farrington and myself. So, in the upcountry, there is only four. Off the, just of the cop system. Off the GSL, Tom. Okay. Off the GSL, which is a gravity supply line. Yes, there's only four coming off the GSL. So, when you say there are strategic places where the big openings where you can put more uh, trucks to be able to get in and out. They're they're at they're at areas where both the two battalion chiefs. And Rich Farrington and I agreed on yes. Okay, so uh, when do that? When will that be taking effect? Are there already four hydrants there, but they're just not uh, as usable? No, sir. There's no. There's well. First of all, there's no gravity supply line, so there's no four hydrants there. Okay, but I, I guess you know, in my assumption, <laughs> we go, don't want you to assume too much. But that the old system itself already has pipes, and it doesn't have stand-ups for uh, for the water to be taken out for the, the uh, old, fire apparatus. The old system. Could you uh, could you explain what you mean by the old system? I guess the one that the that the. Uh, Gravity but, supply line is going to be replacing. So you're talking about the system from Tiger Creek up to the tr water treatment plant? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I guess that would be a long system, right? Yeah, I mean, like every every water entity up there, like Rab Park, they have their own system. Um, Mace okay. Metals has their system. So there are hydrants there right now off of those systems, if that's what you're meaning. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, 
Okay, so that will add a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, some peace of mind. Uh, It'll add a great amount of water supply for the upcountry system, okay. correct? Yeah, for the upcountry and for the trucks and stuff. And then I imagine the other area that the uh, fire apparatus would be getting water from would be like Lake Taboo and uh, the After Bay and uh, Bear River, mm -hmm. different areas like that for making for the helicopters to, uh, in order to. Right. And, yeah. Basically, when there's when there's an extreme uh, emergency need, the um, the um, helicopters, like you say, they'll dip into whatever water resource they have there available close to them and get it and use it for fire apparatus. Okay. All right. Now, uh, got a little bit of time. Upcountry community uh, is going to be having a meeting, I believe, on the ninth, and. Uh, they're going to be discussing your discussion that you're going to be having, I think, with the, or that you're already having ongoing, the development block grants to uh, the water agency. Community development block grants, yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And that's going to the water agency. Was that affecting that block grant? Is that to affect uh, the water agency, use that monies for the upcountry? Well, um, when, when the water agency and the CDBG grant people came to the county, it was for a specific entity up in the upcountry area. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, there are other areas I, I'm, I'm hearing since then that could be used, like one would be down in uh, River Pines. But uh, when they brought that to the Board of Supervisors, it was for one entity and it was for the upcountry area that they were specifically talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you, are you still pursuing a block grant? Sounds like you've got a process going on now for that. Um, AWA is requesting the county uh, because these block grants can't go to AWA. They have to come through the county. AWA is um, Amateur Water Agency is requesting that we do a block grant for our upcountry area. In this one area where if you open up a hydrant, it drains all the water out of the houses and from the pipes in their houses. So, okay. And so they're working on that problem? Yes. Okay. Hopefully we'll get that grant and hopefully the project will go forward. All right. Okay. How about up there in the upcountry? Do you know much about the term limits that are going to be discussed up there? I guess that's term limits for the uh, uh, for for the upcountry uh, up, up community country association council. for the council. Right? Yeah, um, there there are term limits up there. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't recall exactly how many they or how many years they have, but I believe uh, Lynn Morgan and, and Sherry Curtis. Their time is up, and there will be an election, nomination, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Now, you're up at those upcountry uh, meetings, is that correct? Don't you uh, usually go up there and I, give it? Uh, I try to attend, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And how's that working out? I think it's working out good. I think the people up there are, get, are being informed on uh, some of the things that are going on in the county. And that's, that was the whole idea of forming the upcountry councils, to let people be informed on what's going on. So, you know, is that because uh, it's, well, actually, Pine Grove has a, has a council as well, right? Pine Grove has a council also, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they meet on a different night than the upcountry council meets. All right. Now, the uh, Amador County Recreation Agency. Yes. What is the board, uh, what's the board's input into that agency now with uh, recommend, recommendations? Is it... Basically, nothing is a Amador Recreation Agency now stand stand uh, as its own entity. It's a JPA between the county and the cities and the school, okay. a school district. So it's a, it's a uh, joint power authority. And um, um, with with Tracy uh, leaving, I, I will definitely miss her. I thought she uh, she strived to do a great job. I thought in sure. It, she you know, certainly she, did. She did, and it was a lot of work for her at some times. Um, taking on the two halls, the Prop 40 halls, uh, both Pine Grove and Volcano, uh, you know, was a big task for her, and she did it. And my hat's off to her because uh, that's that's a pretty big job in itself. Okay, so the county's input as is as a uh, as a member of right. the organization. So how does the how many does the board? Are there two members from the board? Two members: uh, Supervisor Forrester and Supervisor O'Nettle, and I'm the alternate on that board. Okay, all right, and they're looking for uh, uh, someone to uh, try to take Tracy's uh, spot. Well, I, I think uh, the last direction I heard from that board was that they're going to um, 
let the um, certain departments take charge now. The you know maintenance take charge of maintenance, and and um, okay. I haven't heard yet if they decided to go out and look for a full-time director or if they're looking at a part-time director. I haven't heard any input yet in regards to, but as of right now, they're just going to have the different. Um, the different entities take over their departments and go forward, and, and, and I guess at other board meetings there'll be more discussion on that. Okay, well, that sounds pretty good. Now, uh, anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, yes, fire. What do you think about the SRA fees? Well, you know, I, uh, I think that probably the whole state should pay for, for everything. I think we're already in for that. How, however, uh, it always does make you question things, as, a, as I guess it would, you know, right now with, with the fires going on. Well, is there enough monies for it? Is it, is it being handled right? And uh, so I don't think anybody that lives in the, in the uh, forested areas or the areas that are covered by CAL FIRE is trying to uh, uh, get out of paying any fees that or a burden that we might be uh, right. costing. Uh, I guess so you could ask some questions it would be well how does it help does it really help at with the fire le at the level of, of fighting fire or or is it a way of uh, once again of the way of the state to you know backfill money that he had taken from CDF right and, and I, I was told when this SRA fee uh, went into effect that it was for fire prevention it wasn't for actually fighting the fires itself now that's what I was told I don't know if they've changed their process or not uh, but I, I agree with you. I, I think that it should be throughout the whole state. Everybody should either pay into it or everybody should not pay into it. I don't think you should uh, uh, dictate and segregate on who should pay and who shouldn't pay. Well, you know, uh, we don't have much time, but in a way, say you have a lot of mudslides or something on the coast areas, and uh, I don't think they pay extra for that catastrophe that can happen to them or, you know, uh, so it seems like for insurance purposes when everybody's in it together it usually spreads things out more equitably or maybe not more equitably but it certainly makes it uh, less expensive and seemingly more fair right right and and I think uh, as we have this big fire going on down now in Tuolumne County you know no one wants to see a big fire like that take off because it's so detrimental to society right yeah it certainly is Right. Okay. And uh, thanks for stopping by, Ted. Thank you, sir. And, uh, Anytime. Thanks for watching us here on TSPN and uh, try to make it to that Board of Supervisors meeting. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN.